Welcome back. Sounds as though we're on ITV, doesn't it? Welcome back. Um, a topical question, I think. Well, it's topical uh, the way I see it. There's going to be a decision in 2014. 2015, the parties in Scotland will be publishing manifestos for an, ele an election in 2016. This much we can more or less predict, unless it's fairly predictable, it's all there scheduled. Um, so, Duncan, start with you. What kind of what kind of things can we positive things can we look for in the Labour Party manifesto following a no vote in 2015? Only two years away. Uh, you're talking about the 2015 election, then Westminster election. Right. Yes. Right. No, no. I'm talking about 2016. Well, the manifestos will come out in 2015 for a 2016. Normally, they do they come out six months before? Really? Goodness. <laughs> Normally, we get closer. Uh, is it? So, so you're asking about devolved? But you're de certainly developed, discussing so develop policy. We're develop policy. So we're we're developing policy. Yeah. There'll be fantastic policies. That sounds a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to wonder, have I, I, I need to go watch, so what's this program on Tom Telly called Utopia? <laughs> <laughs> you really are becoming a utopian politician <laughs> the, here. The labour values don't change. I, I would hope we're going to produce a manifesto based on labour values because the ones that we've produced recently not based on labour values haven't been that successful. There have been some, to some extent there have been conflicting uh, policy announcements for what's happening in Scotland and what's happening in, in, in Westminster and they're not, they don't actually add up. Indeed, and I think uh, we're, we're getting to the stage in the Westminster cycle where policies are starting to come out and I think that's, it's important to recognise where these cycles run because really the Scottish party all the Scottish parties are not in, a, in the process of deciding manifesto policies at the moment. Um, they're in the, pro the opposition are criticising government policies and the government's obviously implementing their manifesto. Can you see a, 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 an endemic conflict between attracting Labour's back to, to Labour, uh, potential Labour voters in the south east of England and then a, and a policy to, to maintain your vote in Scotland? Because it's almost like they're completely two, 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 two different policies you need. I think people are much more similar across the UK than, than we think. I mean, there are more Tories in the south of England, and we're, get, we're not going to persuade all the Tories in the south of England to vote Labour. But as I say, we go back to uh, Labour values. Um, you, you talk about how manifestos are produced six months in advance. I well, they've developed, and we, we, kind of go, we kind of get to know before they're finally published. But, but the way elect elections are... Opera are, are fought on the basis of key lines, and in fact, some of the key lines that Labour produced were produced at about four weeks out from the election, and had absolutely no relationship to the policy platform that had been democratically developed. So, I think from, I from where I would like to, to see it, I think there's a, a, a much bigger push towards uh, collaborative policy development in Labour at the moment. I can't put policies on the table because we don't. We're not at that point in the cycle, but I do think we are moving closer again yeah. to Labour values so, and as opposed to the oppositional. Okay, and uh, as a personal revelation to us all here, are you close to the formulation of this policy in Scotland? I am not. Do you have a formal position in the Labour Party? Uh, no, not be beyond being uh, on the exec of my CLP, but right. that doesn't give me a great just, yielding of. Just thought you might reveal something interesting for a headline. <laughs> Kevin, look, not, right, Kevin, let, let, let's imagine, let's, Kevin, let's imagine in 2014 there is a no vote, um, there's a, right, some policies developed for the 2016 election, what do you think the, the, the no, you know, the unions, what kind of positive things do you think they could possibly come up with? I'm, of the three I'm loading that question rather. Yeah, the three parties? Yeah, the well, three well, parties. I, mean, I think the Conservatives and the Liberals are in government. In Britain, so it's not going to diff it's not going to be any different for those two parties. I wouldn't imagine so. They're, they're not going to see them breaking the ranks through the Westminster government. So therefore, you basically look at what would happen if Labour took power in you know, 2015. In 2015, yeah. In so the possibility. Well, I'm in a possibly in a coalition, of course. I would imagine Labour are going to go down the road of ending universalism. This seems to be the new philosophy. Uh, mm. John Lamont's put it forward, and this is this is this is party policy. So I'd imagine they'd go down that road. Uh, I'd imagine they would go back to facilitating the type of privatisation they did during the years they were in government in the Blair Brown administration, you know, where they were uh, PPI, etc. It's, you know, 
So I'm not expecting, I wouldn't expect much from the Labour Party. I don't think it's going to be more radical. I think that I think you might get a more radical Labour Party if they vote yes. Then I could see the Scottish Labour Party actually saying, right, okay, we're free. We don't have to try and win the South of England anymore. Let's have some radical policies that are for the people that the party was actually set up for. So Trump, I would say going to the right, the mm -hmm. Labour Party going to the right, if it's a no vote, if it's a yes vote, I can see the Scottish Labour Party moving to the left and maybe even outflanking the SNP, and that would be really interesting, mm. from the left, you know. Fair enough. Um, Ian? Yeah, there's some, uh, there's some clear indications already from all the parties as to what they're going to be running on. Uh, Ruth Davidson, the Conservative, she said she's definitely going to be taking us into the election on a tax cutting manifesto. So she said she'll be proposing using the Holyrood's tax varying powers, uh, getting them back in and saying, OK, we're going to run government for cheaper. We have seen Joanne Lamont you know, saying universality is unaffordable and I would fully endorse that. that. I would fully endorse that view that uh, it is. It's unaffordable and it's uh, very undesirable. You're better together. As well. Uh, so yeah, so you know, we're getting indication, we're getting some key indications already uh, of where the parties would be keen to go. It's yeah, yeah, it's, is it, no, no, you see, Ruth, this last week, she seemed to she, she drew a line in the sand, or was it a red line? She called it uh, in her uh, campaign to become the leader, and she seems to have already swung considerably towards um, Martha so, Fraser's position. The joy, the joy of politics is what is a clear, you know. But you're not, I can be did, very clear today, she, 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 as, we, she, as we started off, I can she, be very clear today. Yes. Uh, she didn't actually, interestingly enough, she didn't actually build too many bridges immediately after she was she won that um, leadership election. But now that a year down the road, now a year down the road, she seems to be uh, deciding that perhaps a bit of more independence of a Scottish Tory might be a good idea. Would you like to see an independent Scottish Tory party, even if there was a, a, still a, a, a no vote? We are a... We are an independent Scotland, you know, we're, we're constituted there as uh, as a different... Which is more than the Labour Party, isn't it? Which is more than the Labour Party, so we are, we're constituted there as an independent... Uh, Duncan's upset at that. As an independent, as an independent party, but also, you know, what I what I would like to see even more than a, even more than the boring constitutional details, what I like is Boris Johnson is clearly an English Tory, but he clearly sticks up for London and he manages to do that within, uh, you know, he's seen very clearly as he's an advocate for London, and if he's got to go against the Prime Minister a little bit, he's not shy to do that, because he's sticking up for London and he can do that within... It's quite, uh, e it's quite easy to stick up for London. Well... There's a lot of people who will back him in London. There's a, a lot, lot of big, powerful money. Cameron really you know, sticking the boot outside of London and, the, you know, the wealth of London. Really going yeah, for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the Londoners are reeling on the attacks. But, uh, you know, there is within the within the part within the party there is you know the sort of strength there to be sticking up for your areas and you know there is work. And we could expect conservative the, the, type the, politics. The, the, conservative, the conservative party at the moment is a fairly rebellious party and that's very healthy. Uh, and I do have it. And think, is this the, across that, across the UK or, 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 or no across the UK, also in Scotland? Yeah, no across the across the UK we're a fairly rebellious party at the moment uh, and. But only across the UK, well, not in Scotland. No, in Scotland. Scotland's part of the UK. You've not got, you've not okay. got your vote yet. Just locally, Scotland share then. Scotland share, yeah, we're a very rebellious party, it's good. Right. We are cutting our own, right. own, own way. If we get to that stage and we've got a, a no vote in 2014 and they're coming out with their manifestos for developing policy for a 2016 election, what do you see? What do you see the. the, the, the the no vote, the no parties I fear, are going to offer. Are they going to offer the, what are they going to offer the electorate? I fear that the Labour Party will follow, follow what's happening at Westminster, which isn't good for the Labour Party. They, they need to be seen to stand up. The, the great advantage the SNP's got is they're seen to stand up for Scotland. It's part of what you're saying. Both the Tories, Labour, and who's the other one? No, the Greens, <laughs> Have a difficulty with that. You know, they do have masters in London, and they're going to be constrained with, the, you know, they can't come out with diametrically opposed policies for Scotland. But it would be good if they got up in Parliament for them, not necessarily for Scotland, but for them as parties, if they could stand up and at least look like they're fighting Scotland's cause, which at the moment they don't particularly look like. <coughs> Duncan's a good guy to say something. Well, I, I was actually going to steal your thunder about Joanna, but I'll let you do it. The good thing about the whole debate, yes or no, 
there's going to be a whole swathe of people politicised who are going to have an interest. So even a no vote is going to be beneficial mm, to the democracy in Scotland. Kevin, you're looking quizzical, but... No, I think if there's a no vote in Scotland, there'll be, there'll be no change. You vote no, you are voting no, you're voting for nothing. You're voting for no change whatsoever. Uh, so, and when you look around, uh, you know, I care as much as, as Duncan on the question of social justice, there's going to be no change in that. It's, we're, we're, head, we're the fourth most unequal country in the world, and Britain is moving towards being the most unequal country in the world. This is no great thing to boast about. Uh, that's the direction we're going. So as far as being healthy for democracy, I actually think it's going to drive people away from democracy. I would, I would make a prediction here. If we get a no vote, then the turnout in the election in 2015 will be so low that it's going to stun people. It's going to stun people. There. The Scottish it's turnout. The turnout in the Scottish uh, Hollywood election in 2015. 2016. Sorry, 2016 will be the lowest yeah, and it will be so low that people will be disengaging from right, well, democracy. That's a prediction. Right, Duncan, you still? I have to say, I don't agree with that. I think, actually, Norwich Point is, is bang on. It, that even, whatever the outcome, um, people, I think, will be politicised by this process. Uh, there were two things that were said twice that I did want to just come in on. <laughs> One is that the, the status of the Scottish Labour Party. The Scottish Labour Party is devolved within the UK Labour Party, which means it matches the structure of the UK very neatly. Policy making is separate in the Scottish Labour Party. It's a devolved party, just to clear that up. Also on universalism. Just a moment. Right? Uh, just a moment. We'll come to universalism in a second. Um, let me see. The line of um, management for the, the, gen the new General Secretary of the Labour Party office in Glasgow is direct to Westminster, is it not? Not to uh, Joanne Lamont. Line management? That's nothing to do well, with... Well, the, the General Secretary of the party. Uh, you mean... Whoever human, it is will be answerable to... You uh, mean human uh, resources, yeah. Yeah, it will be answerable to someone in London, not to the party leader. Not on politics. Leader. Not on politics. I mean, you're talking about a, a, a corporate structure there. Fair enough. But isn't that... Doesn't that doesn't mean politics come from London. That's okay. I, I just wondered how the, how the Byzantium Labour... The Labour Party work managed to maintain well, we've a, just had a, a statement that you are devolved, but you're not devolved. We've just had a radical reform of the party, and one of the key things was to devolve fully the decision-making, policy-making process of the party. It doesn't look like that. It looks like Anna Sarwar is well, pulling the strings behind um, Joanne Lamb. Anna is, is the deputy leader of this country. We know he's, he's officially... Is officially MP in so he looks as though he's pulling he, strings. He works for Joanne. Oh, okay. I, I believe Who does he work for when he's in Westminster? The Scottish MPs are part of the Scottish Labour Party. Right, so... If they take if the UK if Labour, if Labour whip because it's a... Because we live so they in take the United United Labour Kingdom. whip so his boss is head. Yeah. Right. But when he crosses the border, it turns up Scottish. All right, well, they're, they're, we're, we're yeah. getting a bit out of case. It's similar to the SDLP in Northern Ireland who take the Labour whip, but they would not, they would not say they were English Labour MPs, they would say they were Duncan, it's a devolved party. Duncan, but let's be fair, let's be fair, it is a little arcane to the average viewer and listener. Uh, I, perhaps I shouldn't have asked the question. <laughs> can we can we finish up with a topical issue then? That we could all just have an, an opinion on. I want to talk about universal. Let him answer. Oh, answer the universal. I beg your pardon. Just for one minute, yes. just to clarify, Scottish Labour is not abolishing universalism. Schools and hospitals, we are absolutely committed to. Uh, the the issues around universalism have come because the SNP have extended it. Now, it strikes me that if a political process can extend universalism, then a political process can also contract universalism, and we shouldn't be screaming from the hilltops if somebody talks about that process. So you take the opposite point of view from Robert McAlpine and the Jim from and the, the Jimmy Reed Foundation. Usually, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I imagine so. I mean, Kevin, you'll, I mean, you'll know that point of view. I'm, in, I'm interested in, Duncan, if there, was, if there was fear of taxation, if there was higher taxation right across the board, and the money was available to extend universalism, would you support that? Absolutely, yeah. So, it's a, so what we're talking about is about taxation here. We're talking about the, the, the three things. We're talking so about we don't have the power to actually change and so on. The next, well, hang on. The next time we have an election, we will be doing it under Kalman reforms, which gives us huge tax-bearing powers. People pretend we have no tax-bearing powers now. We actually yeah. have 
tax bearing powers than we have had since 1990. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the already, you know, Ruth has stated. We're going into a manifest. Mm -hmm. We're going in, There'll be a manifesto commitment, and we'll, we'll be going and arguing right. for tax cuts. Now, I anticipate that some of the progressive types, you know, progressive mm -hmm. lefty parties, will be saying, "Oh, we'll go in and tax rises it, uh, and then we'll, you know, a penny for Scotland." A penny for Scotland. Scotland. Someone might say a penny for Scotland. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure Patrick Harvey will go in saying, "Pound for independence." For independence yes, a pound for independence was even a better life. Well, look, guys. You know, it's a fair position and a conservative statement. I mean, it's not for a collective provision, and I accept that as a conservative party position. Don't agree with it, but I don't agree. I certainly I find it sticks in my craw that the Labour Party have, have taken a position where they want to contract universalism. But, the, but my point is, are prepared to fight for the full powers to okay, extend it. Yeah, prescription charges has only just been made a universal thing, yeah, mm -hmm. in the last few years. So why does that become? A golden car. How how can any step in that direction be immovable? I think that was answered by Robin McAlpine. I mean, the point is, universalism is if you've got, especially if you personally you know people who quite well off and they, and, they, and they, they've got universal benefits, like child benefit and living in Spain or somewhere, or they, they could even be a hundred thousand a year. But the point is that you you recover through direct taxation from. The well, know, the well paid. And that's why usually universalism works, but it also means that they feel part of the system. No, I'm not arguing against universalism. I'm arguing against the idea that as soon as you extend universalism, that becomes the immovable wall. Because that means politics is only going one Okay, way. well, it's interesting that that's, you've clarified fact, the drift. The fact, the fact of the matter is, as more and more privatisation happens south of the border, more and more pressure on the market for. We're going to have to follow this, Mr. Policy, then. Because it, we're going to get less and less and less. Money. It's pro rata That's through, what will happen. through Barnett, isn't it? And if there's less money going into the NHS in England because of privatisation, there'll be less money coming to Scotland. And, and there we have that short term view, which leads to a long term disaster, as far as I'm concerned. We're talking about short term policies now. Tories have been in power for three years. And yes, I disagree with a lot of what they're doing, but that doesn't mean the rest of time is Tory nightmare. We need to win the next election. Fifty percent of the Tory cuts are coming in after the next election. Right. And don't tell me Labour's going to have time. If you return us, if you return us. If you return us. No, no. Do you think Labour are going to stop that? Look. Well, if you if you mandate them to, I'll bet you money. It'll take them two years to make up their mind. They can do. They can get a manifesto together in four weeks. You can't do a white paper in less than a year. Okay, then, gentlemen. It's fun when you interrupt, but it's confusing for the listener. It's easy enough for the eye, but the listener doesn't know quite what's going on. Can we finish up with the the topic of the weekend, which was AAA, which most people didn't know much about, but as an economist, I knew straight away. It's called, in other terms, it's five-star rating. And we were told, quite forcefully, and in fact, I believe that, that you've got the Better Together campaign has got a leaflet still going out this week, which it's still going out this week. Oh, they've been withdrawn, it was, they? No, it wasn't even withdrawn. It was one we delivered a few weeks ago. All right. It went out. The one going out this weekend, there's no mention no of mention it. No mention of it. Thankfully, thankfully, you know, yeah. it's not a... So anyway, it was a... had prior warning. That's just, it was a, almost a shibboleth of the, the Better Together campaign that Scotland would lose its uh, AAA credit status upon independence in the UK. Was the, staying with the UK was the only way to maintain it. Unfortunately, the ground has shifted under your feet, Ian. So you're just happy that it's no longer in, that you've now got a new leaflet and you're no, long, no longer embarrassed by that. <laughs> well, no, dear, the leaflet was something, uh, it was a smear the Positive Yes campaign were using against us. They must withdraw this leaflet. I'm bugger if I'm going around 100,000 doors knocking the door going, can I have my leaflet back, please? Because, uh, yes, Scotland are offended by it. I'm sure it'll be compost. What do you now. think about this? Uh, the, triple a, the triple A rating, though, is a very clear, it's a very clear message from the world money markets that, Despite the narrative of cuts that comes, uh, despite the narrative of cuts that comes from uh, comes from the press, we as the country are not cutting far enough. We're not cutting fast enough, and we need to cut further and faster if we want to keep well, that rating. Right. Because that's what the money well, market. That's what the money market made, is saying is you're not addressing you, the you, quick you, enough. You've made it very clear. It's, it's classic Tory policy, isn't it? There's no controversy there. Kevin, you look as though you might have a different opinion on that. We've gone from triple A to double A. So double A, 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 A,
And then back in some energy, the energy from Britain comes from Scotland. No, so I think we'll go back to I think so far that's the best sound bite I've heard. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's going to be clear to the audience for that one. It's some preparation. More, more, <laughs> more wine until there's a series then. Yes. No, I just show you that all the stuff that's been said about the British economy is actually, it's not really true, it's not a strong economy. It's actually a very weak economy based on banking and services. There's only 2 million people working manufacturing in the whole of Britain. We've got an economy in Britain here that is very unstable. Uh, and I think that the illusion that the pound's strong and the illusion that the British economy is strong and it's somehow going to survive the machinations in Europe and whatever comes next around the corner is a total illusion. And we've, they've been lucky to a certain extent. You know, I think the British economy has been lucky. But it's not going to last for long. And the first, whenever a crisis comes, that could go lower. I mean, you, you don't know what's around the corner with Europe and, the, and Sterling. Sterling could have a run. I mean, there's all true. sorts of factors involved here. Well, um, we are running out of time. Has anyone got a final gem like Kevin come out of there to finish, to wind up with? <laughs> You're looking directly at me there. I'm going to no, 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 no. Kevin has a gem. No. Well, I'll just say thank you very much to Duncan Hollersall, Kevin Williamson, Ian McGill, and Noe Stewart. And uh, thanks for listening, everybody, and watching. Goodbye.